So we are still in our season of preparing for 2023. December is always our month where we give thanks to God. And at the same time, we are preparing for the new chapter and the new season. And I've taught you all many times that our God is a God of season. And one of the most important things that a good Christian, a good child of God should be sensitive about are the seasons in your life, are the seasons that God brings up to your life. And one of the most important seasons is, is the season where you're transitioning from another year to another year, or like you're transitioning from, um, from, from, from your transition during your birthday. These are very important seasons. And these seasons, God releases things as same as the enemy is also planning and strategizing. He's always moving to and fro, looking for who to devour. So whoever doesn't prepare for new seasons very well can quickly be devoured by the enemy. That's his, that's his job. That's his primary responsibility or job in this uh, in the world so far. And the best way to to beat the enemy is to be prepared. Is to prepare spiritually, mentally, actually wise, and always that you can prepare. Today we're looking at yielding fruit and becoming prosperous in life, career, business in 2023. As, as, as kingdom professionals, as kingdom entrepreneurs, it is our heritage. It is our responsibility. It is uh, um, it is our our job. Let me say so to be conscious that we are supposed to yield fruits and become prosperous in life, in our careers, and in our businesses. The Bible says in our key verse for today in Psalms one verse three. It says, and he will be like a tree firmly planted. And you, 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 you listening to me, you will be like a tree. Your career will be like a tree. Your business will be like a tree planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in its season. Its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prosper in whatever you do in your career, in whatever you do in your business. As a kingdom entrepreneur, as somebody who is in Christ, as a citizen of the kingdom of God, whatever you do, you are supposed to prosper or come to maturity. You are supposed to grow. Praise God. Every promise of God, every principle of God has a condition. Every promise of God, every principle of God has a condition. In this verse, we see the promise of God. We see the principle of God. God is promising us that there are certain things that when you do as a child of God, the promise is you will be like a tree planted and you will yield fruits in its season. 2023 is a season. And in this season, you are supposed to yield fruits. <laughs> The promise also talks about prosperity. But I want us to understand that every promise in the Bible, every principle of God has a condition, has a demand. As a kingdom entrepreneur, as a kingdom professional, it is your responsibility to understand kingdom ways and live by them. It is for you to understand kingdom conditions and to activate these conditions so you can enjoy the promises of God, the blessings of God 
according to the principles that God has communicated in his word. Many Christians sometimes are not able to manifest the blessings of God, are not able to manifest the promises of God because they do not understand how to activate the reality of these promises and these principles over their life. The Bible says your career and your job, you as a person, you are supposed to yield fruits throughout the year, throughout the season. The question is, why are there some months that you are lacking? Why are there some months that you are struggling in lack? There are no fruits to show that you work hard. Why is that? Why is it that you are not prosperous yet, even though you do your best, even though by now you should have gone through your, 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 your days at seasons or your seasons of training and preparation, but yet the prosperity that the Bible talks about seems to be very far from you. It gets more challenging when you see somebody at the age of 40 and 50 or 55, or the person is gradually weighing out as far as age is concerned. But when it comes to the prosperity that they read, the prosperity that God was talking about in the, in the days of, 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 of the patriarchs and still talking about today, the prosperity and the fruitfulness seems to be very, very far from them. You know, anytime I talk about this, I always bring the reality that I experienced as a life coach and business coach with people. I have coached the young and the old. And many a time you see, you see men and women who are 50 years and 45 years, 48, 55 years, and they are still trying to understand how life is and to actually succeed. And when I get to work with them for a couple of days and weeks, you get to see that, hey, you are where you are because you are responsible. You are operating in ignorance and in darkness. And that is why it is important for you to understand some of these things. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says, the book of the law, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it, so that you may be careful to do everything. And this is where many Christians are finding it difficult to experience the manifestation of what God has prepared for them. The ability to do, the ability to fulfill the conditions as to the principles and the precepts of the kingdom of God. And I'm sure you must have heard many preachers preach and teach and say that when it comes to prosperity and yielding fruit, prayers alone cannot help you. It takes the place of principle. It takes the place of you understanding the kingdom principles around prosperity, around fruitfulness, and then executing these principles to the latter, and most importantly, doing these under the directions of God and in faith. So in Psalms 1 verse 3, the Bible, God is clearly telling us that we can yield fruits in season and that we can be prosperous in whatever we do. So how can we really make this a reality? Because we know that God cannot lie because he's not a man. We know that whatever God says 
he is too faithful. He will hold his own self accountable to make these things come to pass. Because everything can pass away, but his word cannot pass away. So from our key verse, we can see the blessings promised, but there is a condition. I want you to know that in Christ, living according to the ways of the Lord, a child of God does not know a previous year as the best year or the current or the next coming year as a bad year. I've always emphasized on this because the Bible only talks about glory to glory. The Bible talks about goodness and mercies. And many a times people are afraid of the next coming year and they are uncertain about it because of the challenges they faced in the previous years. But in Christ, as a child of God, as somebody who is in the kingdom, you have all it takes to engineer and create the kind of year that you want to see for yourself. And that is why taking time spiritually to prepare for the year is very important. It is your responsibility. Hear this and hear me very well. It is your responsibility. And with the help of the Spirit of God, who is always available to help us in our infirmities, it is your responsibility to live your life according to the will of God. It is your responsibility to live your life in total obedience to the word of God so you can experience his promises and his blessings. When you look at Psalm 1 verse 1, the Bible starts by saying, blessed, blessed, blessed. If you look at it carefully, it says, blessed, is the man, blessed is the woman, blessed is the entrepreneur, blessed is the professional. The Bible starts clearly set. Blessed talks about being fortunate, being prosperous, and being favored by God. That's the meaning of blessed in that particular verse. It also means having abundant faith in God. Do you know that the ability to have faith in God is recognized as a blessing in the spirit realm? Yes, because with faith, you can command things to happen. Jesus said, if you speak to this mountain, be moved. It will be moved as long as you have faith and do not doubt in your heart. Faith is a spiritual gift, and you can build yourself in the most holy faith and grow in faith. So if you have faith, it is recognized as a blessing. Praise God. Another way to be recognized as blessed is you carry the Holy Spirit in you. Yes, having the Holy Spirit is a blessing. Because the Holy Spirit can minister to you. The Holy Spirit can guide you. The Holy Spirit can give you an idea that will make you a multimillionaire. The Holy Spirit can help you to make a decision that will change the rest of your life, career, and business. So carrying, when the Holy Spirit dwells in you, it is recognized as a blessing. Being fruitful. Like what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, is also recognized as a blessing. Being somebody who spreads the goodness of God in the lives of other people is recognized as a blessing. As a blessing. Because when you give, it comes back to you. The law of giving is a permanent law in the kingdom. So with all of these understanding, the Bible starts by saying in Psalms 1 verse 1, blessed is this. And when you read Psalms 1 and Psalms 2, 
Psalms 1 verse 1 and, and Psalms 1 verse 2, you will see the conditions. You will see the conditions that God clearly laid out that we must follow if we are to be people who can yield fruit and become prosperous in life. So it therefore means that if we do not hold ourselves accountable and responsible to live according to these principles and precepts established by God, we will not be able to experience fruitfulness and become prosperous. So it is important for us to understand this. Let me tell us something about the word of God. You know, if you read the Bible just as stories, you're going to miss out on a lot. One of the most powerful, the word remains among the Jesus is the word. So when you don't carry the word in your spirit, you are missing a lot as far as your spiritual work with God is concerned. When you read a verse and understand it in your spirit, it is accounted to you as a blessing. Now, the word of God embodies three things. The word of God embodies three things. When you study the word of God, you will get three key things. Number one, promises. Promises are God's commitments to you. God promised when you do this, this happen to you. Or because of this, I promise you this. Number two, principles. When you study the world, you will see principles. You will see blueprints. Like this verse, what we're handling, handling today, is a kingdom principle with a promise attached to it. And number three, prophecies. The word of God is also a prophecy for your future. It provides a spiritual guide, a spiritual direction on how you can live your life and experience success, good success, according to the will of God. So when you study the Bible, every time you open your Bible to study, what you're studying includes the promises of God to you, the principles of the kingdom that you must know and begin to live by so you can enjoy the blessings attached to these principles and most importantly, the prophecies of God about your life and your destiny. So what are the conditions? What do you need to do as a kingdom professional, as a kingdom entrepreneur, so you can become prosperous and yield fruit in your life, in your career, and in your business? What can you do? So with that foundation laid, let us get into the crux of the matter now. What do you need to do, child of God? What do you need? to do? What is your responsibility? I have always emphasized many times, for there to be a miracle, for there to be a transformation, for there to be a breakthrough, there is the place of divinity and humanity coming to work together. And that's why God desires you to be in him, to be in his kingdom. God cannot collaborate with you. God cannot cooperate with you. God cannot manifest through you and with you when you are not part of his kingdom. And that is why accepting Jesus Christ and living a life, a consecrated life, living for him, submitting to him, having your body always presented to him as a living sacrifice is the foundation for you to experience success and prosperity. Because for you to yield fruit, for you to become prosperous, there needs to be a partnership between you and God. If your soul is not readily available, it will be difficult for you to experience. And you know, this one thing what, that you see many Christians are not, they're in church, yes, they are saved, yes, but they cannot experience the 
other manifestation of God. Praise God. So what do you need to do according to the scriptures so that throughout next year and for the rest of your life, you need to understand this light I'm about to share with you and make sure that you, you're going to, we're going to pray and you're going to cry out for the help of God and for the help of the spirit of God to enable you, to help you to live this way. Number one, the Bible is very clear in Psalms 1 verse 1. That's where we see the first condition that you must fulfill as a child of God for you to yield fruit and become prosperous. Psalms 1 verse 1 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. You do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. That is the first condition. Do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. For you to yield fruits in season, throughout the season, and for the rest, because their life is a season, 2023 is a season as a year, but your life is a season as a lifetime. So for you to yield fruit in 2023 and for the rest of your life and become prosperous, you need to respect this kingdom principle as established by the kingdom, by God. The first principle is do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Let us break it down. Who is a wicked person according to the kingdom? Who is a wicked person according to the world? According to the Bible, a wicked person is that person whose mouth is filled with cursing and deceit and oppression. There are some people that they speak evil of people. They deceive people and they oppress people. Under his tongue, the Bible says, are mischief and iniquity. That is a wicked person. That is a wicked person according to the Bible. You curse, you curse people, you deceive people, you oppress people. Maybe you use your position to oppress people. Let's say you have you, you, you are a CEO, you are a managing director, you use your position to oppress staff and subordinates, that is wickedness. Your tongue is full of mischief and iniquity. Anytime you are thinking of things, you're only thinking of how you can create, you, you're always mischievous in whatever you do. You're always thinking of doing things that are full, full you're full of iniquity your thoughts are full of iniquity your suggestions always full of iniquity that is wickedness people who walk in the counsel of the ungodly listen to the ungodly now listen carefully the bible did not say that you are wicked as his as, as, as a child of god as a kingdom entrepreneur or as a kingdom professional. No, the Bible says, do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Because you are, you are studying the word as a kingdom person. You are studying the word as a child of God. So God knows you are his own, yes? But you can miss out on the blessings of God you can miss out on fruitfulness and prosperity if you are in God. If you are a Christian, you are a believer, you have been redeemed by Christ, but yet you take counsel from the wicked. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. For example, let's say you're a man and you are married. 
and you have given your life to Jesus Christ, and you know that infidelity and uh, all of these things is not good, it's against the will of God, and is against the institution of marriage established by God. But then yes, you have friends with another married person who sees that keeping concubines and slave queens and moving around and having girls here and there is normal and getting drunk is normal. And yet you are taking counsel from that person. You are breaking this principle. So you are of the kingdom and taking counsel from the wicked that you are breaking this principle. Blessed is my child. Blessed is my son and daughter who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. That is why you will notice some Christians or some people are very stern when it comes to who they have around them as a circle. Personally for me, there's a difference when you're going towards somebody to evangelize the person and bring the person to the kingdom is different. But it is, a, it is totally different when you keep somebody you know that you guys don't have the same belief system and you take advice from that person. Now that is you working in the council of the wicked. And immediately that is, if they are doing that, immediately you cannot activate the blessings of this principle in your life. Remember, the word of God, everything can change, but the word will never change. Except you see, we are the ones to repent and align ourselves to the word. The word can never repent to align ourselves, to align him. Uh, uh, the word can never repent to align with us and what we want. We are the ones to repent and align to the word. Then we can benefit the blessing of a principle or the blessings of a covenant established by God. This is a challenge for many believers. Fruitfulness and prosperity can be far from you because you are in the kingdom, but yet you take counsel from the wicked. You take counsel from people who don't live according to the will of God. And they are very open about it and you know it. People who walk in the counsel of the wicked take on godly advice, take worldly advice from people. You make plans with the wicked. You willfully participate in the ways of wicked people. You sit and you claim, oh, I am a born again Christian. Born again. And then you will sit and plan on how to go and I don't know, steal, cheat, or whatever you want to do. And then at the end, you expect the blessings of God. It is a principle. And with this principle, you need genuine repentance before you can activate the blessings of this principle. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. The Bible says, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. God knows that men are wicked. But he also expects his children not to walk in the counsel of the wicked. God says that every intention of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Genesis 6 verse 5. Psalms 10 verse 2. The Bible says, in pride, the wicked Pursue the needy. Let them be caught in the schemes they devise. So there is a curse attached to the wicked. I'm sure you have heard stories and seen stories of, you know, uh, thieves being arrested and a friend of a thief was arrested. You were around them. 
you may you 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 you, you, you may. You may not be an active arm robber or a thief, but you are around them. So wherever the police sees you and them, the conclusion is you are part of them. Hear this and hear this very well. You are on your own when you pick up the advice, perspectives, values of ungodly people, of wicked people. It means that you deprive the counsel of God and you choose the counsel of the wicked. Psalms 1 verse 6 says, For the Lord knows and fully approves the way of the righteous. God knows and approves only the ways of the righteous. Very clear. I want to tell you, there are certain blessings in the kingdom that prayers will never give you. Prayers can only open your spirit and your spiritual man to, to, to open these revelations so you know and live by them. The kingdom of God is about a king, a place, and his people driven by royal principles. For the Lord knows, Psalms 1 verse 6, for the Lord knows and fully approves the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall do what? Shall perish. And if the way of the wicked shall perish, and you are seeking advice from the wicked, you are seeking counsel from the wicked, it means the wicked can only advise you about their ways which shall perish. So when you take counsel from the wicked, Whatever they counsel you to do, it will also perish. I have seen people lost beautiful marriages because of wrong counsel. People losing beautiful opportunities because of counsel. From the wicked. You see a young man who is working for, for somebody who is taking care of the person, taking care of the young man, uh, um, doing this best, having beautiful plans for you, uh, a, a, a foolish friend now go and advises you, you now come and change your character and behavior, and then you lose that person. You lose the opportunity, you lose the, the favor, you lose the network, and then you are stranded alone. The counsel of the wicked. You see a young lady in a relationship with a young man who is committed, dedicated, working hard, and thinking long term. She now go and listens to some slay queens and some evil ladies she call her, they are her friends. Then they advise her to come and land a gentleman, be like, oh, she, he's not taking care of you, all of that. Meanwhile, the man has put you in the plan of his life and is thinking long term and is planning, okay, this is how we're going to succeed five, 10 years from now. Having a plan, you know, come and so speak anyhow ask some money, all of that, the relationship ends. You now lose a committed, dedicated, diligent, God-loving young man because he was not able to do the things to you that your funny friends advise you to do. These are things we see around us. Evil counsel, the counsel of the wicked has destroyed lives around us. You may be listening to me right now and you're going through a challenge in your life because of the counsel of the wicked and you are regretting and you are regretting is there anybody here that you have, you, you have ever received counsel from the wicked and then you you are like my goodness what did i do what did i do with my life is there anybody here like that yes you see people have experienced that it's 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 you know, God is the beginning and the end. These things that he inspired people and his prophets to write, these are things that he foresaw that they would happen. Be careful about the counsel of the wicked. Be careful about the counsel of the wicked. Here is somebody. As a child of God who has experienced the saving grace of Jesus Christ, out of love and gratitude and devotion to Jesus Christ, it is your responsibility to do your best to be like Jesus Christ who saved you. Jesus Christ never, 
ever received counsel from the wicked. So why are you receiving counsel from the wicked? The only thing that Jesus did was to preach love, was to preach about the gospel of truth, was to preach salvation to the wicked and point them back to the kingdom of God. But not to take counsel from them. May evil counsel not destroy a beautiful life in the name of Jesus. There are some people that they already had a beautiful life. They we are already living life according to the will of God. But because of evil counsel, evil counsel took them away from the will of God and they crashed. Be careful of wicked counsel. A child of God must walk in the counsel of the following. Hear me carefully. A child of God must walk in the counsel of the following. And before I say this, please, I have taught this several times. Your relationships can either make you very successful or they can make you a big time failure. There is no reason for you to have a relationship with somebody that you guys are not walking the same path. There is no absolute reason. Somebody can be your acquaintance. Anybody you call your friend should be somebody that you have the same, you're walking the same path. Let me tell you something I did to a friend, something that happened one time. A friend wanted to get married and they had a lot of people in his groom's list, right? Like the gentleman that, and he didn't know which one to remove and which one to do. I'm like, are you serious? I'm like, it's easy. Number one, out of all of these friends, which one is womanizing and which one is still drinking alcohol? They, they should never be a groomsman. He looked at me like that. And instantly, half of the people in the groomsmen were had to go. I told him very clearly, if anybody on this list, you want to make them groomsmen in your marriage, if any of them, you know that this one, any of them is a womanizer, and any of them drink alcohol and get drunk, terminate them from the list. It is not about you knowing just their name. It's about you guys having the core values and the belief system that can contribute to a beautiful life. These are the kinds of people that would destroy your marriage tomorrow. Full counsel from the beginning of your wedding. I said number two, Remove anyone that you know in the heart of your heart that you cannot run to for advice or the person cannot stand with you and fight for the good of your marriage. And that's how the groomsmen were brought down to about five or four. Evil counsel everywhere. Be careful about the people you call your close friends, the people who are in your close circle. Are they of godly counsel or wicked counsel? I want to tell you very clearly. If you call somebody your best of best of friends, or you have a close friend calling your best friends, and you know that they are not godly, and you take counsel from them, you are the one deactivating the blessings attached to this principle over your life. As simple as that. Because you are taking counsel from the ungodly or the wicked. So a child of God must walk in counsel from the following sources. Number one, the Holy Spirit. You get counsel from the Holy Spirit. Number two, the word of God, the Bible. There are certain challenges or there are certain times that I want to make a decision, go to the Bible, look for verses that talk about a case like that and begin to read. You will receive counsel from that situation. 
Because the Bible says the word of God is a lamp to your feet. It's a guide to you and the path that you have chosen. Number three, supernatural encounters with God can be the counsel that you need. You can be going through something. You don't know the counsel to take. You can decide to pray about it and you sleep at night and you can have an encounter in the dream with an angel or with somebody giving you further instructions on how to go about it. Or you can get into a trance. Or you can have a prophetic encounter. Let's say during service now like this, God now gives me a word for you. That can become the counsel for that case. And lastly, Godly brethren and spiritual leadership. That's also where you can get godly counsel. Friends who are in Christ. Fellow believers in the church where you worship. Fellow PF members who are your friends. Or you talk to your pastor. Or you can bring the student to me. We talk about it. We pray about it. to get for that counsel and all of that. That is where you can get counsel. Apart from all of these, be careful where else you get counsel. And of course, spiritual leadership involves your, 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 your biological parents, okay? Because they're also a spiritual authority over your life, okay? So take it very important. It also include mentors who are godly. Praise God. So do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Be careful about this. Because when you walk in the counsel of the wicked, you minimize the counsel of God. And that is why you cannot activate the blessings of these principles over your life, career, and business. Somebody needs to go and check their circle. Somebody needs to go and check the people that they receive advice from. Maybe they have been part of slowing down your breakthrough and you don't know. Because as long as this principle it's not about you can have seed. As long as you have wrong counsel around you and you listen from them, pray and go up and come down, things will be slow. Because there is a kingdom principle that you are working against. You need revelation and the mercies of God to turn things around and you start seeing changes. Number two, number two, do not stand in the path of sinners. Do not stand in the path of sinners. This is linked again to the wicked, right? But this talks about standing in the path of sinners. Point one talks about taking counsel, listening to their advice. But point two is not standing on the path, in the path of sinners. Psalms 1 verse 1, the deep, towards the deep part, it says, no stand, let's set is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners. So for you to yield fruits and become prosperous in life, career, and business, do not stand in the path of sinners. Your job is to evangelize sinners and bring them to the kingdom, but do not stand in their path. Ordinarily, we may think of a sinner as someone who is immoral, you know, evil, and all of that. Those are just like byproducts of a sinner. Right? A sinner is generally somebody who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. For all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. We are born as sinners because of what Adam did. We are born into a sinful nature. And the only way to escape the sinful nature is to accept the one who was made sin for our sake, who is Jesus Christ. So God is calling us his children, to choose the way of righteousness, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, and to live for him. A Christian cannot expect to make forward progress if he seeks counsel from sinners or make plans with unbelievers. 
The Bible is very clear about 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be yoked together. Another, verse, another version says, do not be equally yoked. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? In other words, it's like having a close relationship with somebody you know does not stand as far as the light of God is concerned. And worst of all, you are not evangelizing to that person. So it is important that you understand that God does not expect you to stand in the way of the sinners, but to pull them into the kingdom by evangelizing to them. And it relates to you taking counsel from the wicked. Because when you stand in the way of the sinner, without bringing the light of God, you are not careful, they will evangelize you. People have gone to do evangelism, and instead of them evangelizing this person, the person evangelized them and pulled them back from the kingdom of light into the kingdom of darkness. So it is our responsibility to understand that we are not supposed to stand in the way of the sinners, but we are supposed to evangelize Christ to them. Number three, and then we get to the place of prayer. Do not sit with scoffers or ridiculous. Do not sit with scoffers. Now, the same verse, the same verse says, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers or ridiculous. Do not sit to rest in the seat of scoffers. Who is a scoffer? A scoffer in this context means two critical things. Follow me here very carefully. A scoffer in this context means two different things. Number one is a scoffer is somebody who mocks Christ. A scoffer is somebody who ridicules the things of God. A scoffer is somebody who opposes the gospel. For example, it is very common now for people to go on Facebook and speak against men of God, speak against things in the Bible and all of that. Those are examples of scoffers. And let's say if somebody comments something and you go agree with it, meanwhile you claim to be in the kingdom, you are sitting on the seat of a scoffer. Or you see somebody painting a man of God, black life example, the highest people in the kingdom who are always vulnerable and, 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 and always spoken against loudly are prophets of God, right? People who have vocal about what God is saying and all of that. Now, somebody loudly makes a comment against a prophet and you just depend on that comment and then go speak against the same man of God in the comment section. You are sitting on the seat of scoffers. I am not saying that in, in the kingdom, of course, we'll have people who fake the kingdom. One of the strategies of the enemies is to raise fake people who replicate the original. Fake things only exist because there is an original. And one of the strategies of the enemy is to raise fake men of God here and there so that they can distract the kingdom and the body of Christ. And that is why discernment is very important in the body of Christ. Being able to discern and to understand that this person is a genuine man of God and is teaching the ways of God and the kingdom of God is very important. But my general advice has always been, it is not your place to publicly be in a discussion that ridicules a man of God. It's not your responsibility. In the kingdom, there are judges. There are people that judge. There are other genuine men of God that have 
God has given them the authority to judge fake men of God. Yes, many people don't know that. There are certain apostles and other prophets that they can stand and speak against a fake prophet and that person can drop dead the next morning. So there are judge that who have become elders who can judge fake men of God. And that will be happening a lot. But if you, are, if, if you have not been ordained as a judge, it's not their responsibility. What if somebody is just trying to ridicule and fake stories about a genuine man of God, and then you hurriedly go and comment against the person? You don't know who the person is. You don't know when that thing happened, but you're just depending on what you saw on the internet, and then you conclude on it. What if it was a doctored video, fake pictures, and all of that? You have become a scoffer. You have become a scoffer. A scoffer is anybody who mocks Christ, is anybody who ridicules the things of God, and anybody who opposes the gospel. So as a Christian, as a child of God, if you sit in the seat of scoffers or you partake in what scoffers are doing, it can affect your prosperity and the blessing of yielding with God. Because the Bible is very clear. Blessed is the one who does not sit down to rest in the seat of the scoffers. You do not relate with the scoffers. So we need to be careful. As I, as I always say, generally avoid discussions that have been designed or orchestrated to speak against the kingdom or to ridicule the things of God. It is very dangerous for people. Worst of all, for genuine men of God, you don't know the covenant they have with God. You don't know the kind of curse that you can take by ridiculing a man of God publicly. The best way is avoid the discussions. God did not call you to judge that particular person. Focus on your salvation and make sure your work with God is right and you're manifesting your destiny. The Bible talks very clearly about scoffers. Second Peter chapter three, verse three. Knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires. This one thing about scoffers. Scoffers follow their own sinful desires. For example, somebody can, a fake man of God can be angry at a German man of God and can pay a blogger who is also an unbeliever to frame stories against a fake man of God just to pull the person down. That is an example of a sinful desire. And we have seen that happening. It is recorded as one of the signs of the last days. We see that happening in Cameroon a lot, Nigeria, happening everywhere. Scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing. People speaking against the things of God, speaking against tithing, speaking against things written in the Bible, which are very clear. Those are examples of scoffers. That's, those are the pre-announcement uh, uh, of the Antichrist. As, as simple as it is, go and open 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, and you will see. Jude chapter 1, verse 18. The Bible says, they said to you, in the last time, there will be scoffers following their own godly passions. In the last days, there will be scoffers. Another thing about scoffers is a scoffer or a, or a ridiculous is somebody or people who sit and speak against other people. You sit and you ridicule another human being. You sit and you laugh at another human being. You sit and you laugh at the predicament of another person. You are a scoffer and it's against the will of God. Don't sit and backbite another human being. Don't sit and gossip another human being. Don't sit and ridicule another human being. So scoffing is in two dimensions. Ridiculing the things of God 
and of course, ridiculing other people. So do not sit with scoffers. Do not sit with deceitful men. Do not keep company with hypocrites. Psalms 26 verse 4. And there is something against scoffers in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 34. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 34. The Bible says, though he scoffs at the scoffers and scorns at the scorners. So God will scoff at the scoffers and scorn at the scorners. Yet he gives grace. He gives undeserved favor to the humble. He gives favor to people that humble themselves to focus on the things of God and to serve God. He grants favor to people that humble themselves and they are kind to other human beings and do not ridicule other human beings. So you want to experience prosperity and yield fruits and enjoy the blessing of this kingdom principle as stated in Psalms 1 verse 3. Point number three, do not sit on the seat of scoffers. Do not sit on the seat of scoffers. People sit and they're gossiping against another human being. Leave that place. If you cannot make them to stop, leave the place. Don't form a council and backbite, frame, lie, and do stuff against other people. You are hurting your own destiny. There is a kingdom principle that will speak for or against you. As simple as that. That's the funny thing about principle of the kingdom. That's why the law of seed time and harvest time favors even of believers. As long as you are a giver, you'll be blessed. You, whether you're in Christ or not, you'll be blessed. Even this, this one of those principles. The difference is when you are in Christ, grace now comes into place. Favor, divine favor now comes into play, which now increases your amount of results. Number four, the fourth principle, the fourth thing that you must respect, the fourth condition that you must respect to enjoy the blessings of these principles is, is written in verse two, Psalms one, verse two. Psalms 1 verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law, and on his law, he meditates on it day and night. So the fourth principle that you must respect, the fourth condition that you must respect according to this principle is delight and meditate consistently on the word of God. Delight and meditate consistently on the word of God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 puts it better. The Bible says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall read and meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. So you have to do everything in accordance, including the principle clearly stated in Psalms 1, verse 1 to 4. If you study the word and you don't do everything written in it, forget about the blessings promised in the word. I was saying earlier, when you are studying the Bible, three things are happening when you are studying the word of God. Number one, you are connecting yourself to the promises that God has promised you in the scriptures. But every promise in the scripture has a condition. Every promise, even salvation, the condition for salvation is you must open your mouth 
and confess that Jesus is Lord and you must believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. Until this condition is fulfilled, you have not been saved. You don't have salvation. Every promise in the Bible has a condition. So delighting and meditating consistently on the word means when you study a verse, know about the verse, but go deeper and begin to ask yourself, Lord, what is the condition? What is my path as far as this verse is concerned? This is a promise you have given me. Lord, reveal to me my responsibility. Reveal to me my responsibility. That is when you see the hand of God. Many Christians are short-sighted. Many Christians are short-handed and don't enjoy the full blessings of the kingdom because they know scriptures, yes, but they do not ask to know. For me to enjoy the blessings of this scripture, for me to enjoy the blessings of this prophecy, for me to enjoy the blessings of this covenant, what do I need to do on my path? You study the Bible. The Bible says that if you accept Jesus Christ, you will be saved. What is my responsibility? You need to go deeper. Okay, my responsibility is to genuinely open my mouth and confess that Jesus is Lord. My responsibility is to believe in my heart that he actually died on the cross to save me. Until this condition is fulfilled, forget about enjoying the blessing of salvation. Many people read the Bible and they will say, the blessings of Abraham are mine. And then I will ask, what did Abraham do to receive blessings from God? Until you begin to walk that path, forget about experiencing the blessings of Abraham over your life. Many Christians claim that many Christians do not obey and begin to act according to the will of God. Your way will only be made prosperous and you will only be successful according to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 when you begin to carefully do everything in accordance to the will of God. Child of God, hear this. Sufficient spiritual knowledge, sufficient spiritual understanding is non-negotiable when it comes to the kingdom of God. I always, I, when I always advise people, and it's one thing I do myself. And if, if there's ever any time I feel like not praying, I always study the word. One thing about studying the word the right way is you are, you are, you are, you are, because it's hard for you to study and not pray anyway. It's, if you are really studying the word the right way and the Holy Spirit is helping you, it's difficult for you to study and not pray. There are times that the enemy is trying to make you feel tired not to pray. Pick the Bible and begin to read. I can be distracted not to pray in a day, but never a day pass when I've not studied the word. From the, the word was from the beginning. God spoke the word and things came into creation. There are certain scriptures that when you study and light breaks out from the scripture and enters your heart, things change immediately. Sufficient spiritual knowledge and understanding is non-negotiable when it comes to the kingdom of God. The word of God is depth of God's light. And without the light of God, you will exist in darkness. The light of God that carry you determines how far you will go in destiny. The amount of the light of God that you carry will determine how far that you will go in destiny. The light of God that you carry will determine how much of spiritual growth you will experience. The light of God, the word of God that you carry will determine how much of manifestation you will experience in the kingdom of God. God will never do anything beyond his word. That is why the more of the word you know, the more of God you experience. 
The more of the word that you meditate on it, the more success you experience. Because you begin to walk according to who God created you to be. You begin to walk according to the light of God. You begin to walk from the place of authority because you now know who you are in the kingdom and whose you are as far as you are concerned. Hear this child of God. Prayers does not replace the word. It is the word that empowers spiritual activities. Please hear this very carefully. Prayers does not replace the word. Like you pray for how many years? If you are praying without studying the word, you are actually praying amiss. That's why some people say, nobody prays the scripture and gets it wrong. You don't pray from the scripture and get it wrong. No, because you always pray according to the will of God. And nobody prays according to the will of God after in faith and don't get a response. Prayers does not replace the word. It is the word that empowers spiritual activities. It is the word that brings results to any spiritual activity. Any spiritual activity that I want to carry out, if there is a scripture to back it up with it, anything you want to do in your business, anything you want to do in your career as a kingdom professional and entrepreneur, make sure there is a light from the word of God. Make sure there is a scripture that you are attaching to it to invoke the move of God and the hand of God. You want to travel to a nation for business or for a job, look for a scripture, attach to that tree, attach to that move, and begin to pray according to the scripture. You say in your word, you will make the nations my possession. And whatever move you are making in that light, you know that there is a scripture, there is the light of God that is backing this move. Any spiritual activity without deep revelation from the word is a waste of time. Yes. For example, fasting is a spiritual activity. But if you just sit and you're fasting and there is no, there's no word, there's no scripture that you're using for that season to fast as per what you're seeking the face of God with, your fasting is done halfway. That's why I always emphasize in the season of fasting, I always share scriptures. I will emphasize find time within the day to pray and to study the scriptures. It is revelation from the word that empowers a spiritual activity. Like, for example, when you want to pay your tithe, don't just heavily pay tithe. When you have prepared your tithe, kept aside, pick up Malachi chapter 3, read and study prayerfully, meditate, and then decree and declare on that tithe, then go pay. That is the complete way to do a spiritual activity. There is a word, there is a light that is backing up that action, which now makes it spiritual. And God does nothing without his word. And when you do that, you put God in the dispensation where he now acts according to his word. The word of God is the embodiment of God as the divine light. So you want to yield fruit next year. You want to be prosperous next year. I want to challenge somebody. You need to upgrade your Bible study life. Not just studying because I said it. Not just studying because they're reading scriptures. No, Stud reading stories in the Bible. No, Stud Studying because you are seeking, you want to know God more. Studying because you want to know the promises of God for your life. Studying because you want to know the principles of the kingdom so you begin to apply them. Studying because you want to know the prophecies of God over your life. There are three primary things that when you begin to study the word, you need to get revelation about. Revelation about the promises of God concerning your life, the principles of the kingdom you are supposed to live by as a kingdom person and the prophecies of God over your life. 
Anytime you open the Bible to study, you need to encounter these three things. And when you have the Holy Spirit or you are a prayerful person, when you begin to study, the Holy Spirit assists you, opens up your mind. Sometimes I'm studying the word. Look at that. Let me, okay, see this verse. See this verse here. See this story here. It now relates and gives a whole new revelation. And I want to challenge you. If you are struggling to pray, or there are times you don't know what to pray about, increase your Bible study life. The word is not enough in you. One thing that the Bible will do, one thing that the word will do as far as your prayer life is concerned is that it will increase. It will give you a lot of things to pray about because you will have a lot of promises in the Bible to pray into your life. You will have a lot of principles that you have discovered and you need the grace and the help of God to live by those principles. You will see certain promises about your future that you need to pray them to manifest into your life. So number four, for you to yield fruit and become prosperous, you need to honor the principle in Psalms 1 verse 2. Delight in the law of God. Meditate on it day and night. This is a kingdom principle that many people get to struggle because they are not part of it. In all of this that I have said, in all of this that I have said, and in everything that we always do in this ministry, it is difficult for you to partake of a kingdom that you are not part of. So if you are following this session now or much later, and you have not genuinely accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, or you know that your spiritual life has been undulating. You want to rededicate your life to God. You will make the commitment and then go back to the world and live a sinful life and then you are convicted again and then you come back, you are just on and off. You want to do a genuine rededication. Now is the time because God is going to bless. God is willing to bless. God is willing to give you prosperity and fruit and all of that. The primary condition is for you to be part of the kingdom. It's for you to make up your mind to live a life full of righteousness and consecration. So if you are that person, just lift up your hands where you are as a sign of surrender and say this prayer after me. After that, you can WhatsApp me. And let's talk about it. Let me encourage you. We stay together and we keep on growing in Jesus' name. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as my Lord and personal Savior. Lord, take over my life. I surrender to you. I rededicate my life to you. I desire to live for you. Redeem me from the pit and bring me forth to the kingdom of light. Strengthen me, Lord, and help me to live according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have genuinely made that prayer from your heart, if you have never accepted Christ, you have made that prayer, make sure you WhatsApp me, let us talk further. And of course, if you have done a rededication, WhatsApp me, let us talk further. That is when, that is the first condition that you will get to activate, first of all, to enjoy all the promises all the blessings and all the goodness and the mercies and the grace and the favor of God that are in the kingdom. If you are ready to pray, comment, it's time to pray. Comment, it's time to pray. Are you ready to pray? Comment, it's time to pray. So we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray in prayers of cry for mercy. Prayer, yeah, crying for mercy is very important and all the prayer points. Crying for mercy particularly because many people have been walking in the council of the wicked. They have been walking, they have been sitting on the seat of scoffers and the seat of sinners. 
and only the mercies of God can pull you from there and position you in the place where you can yield fruit and enjoy prosperity in the name of Jesus. Just open your mouth and begin to worship the King of Glory. Just begin to worship the King of Glory. Just honor him. Just magnify him. Just give him the glory. Say, Father, I worship you. Ancient of days, I magnify your name. Just begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Just, just worship God, begin to pray. And worship God. Go ahead and worship him. 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 Father, we worship you. In the Lord, we exalt your name. We fire your name. Father, we the glory. Father, we fire you. No one like you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 In Jesus' name, we are worshiper. We are going to pray. You're going to cry for mercy. You're going to cry, Lord, where I have been a scoffer, have mercy. Where I have been seeking counsel from the wicked, have mercy. Where I have been standing in the path of sinners, Father, have mercy. Only the mercies of God can change that situation. Only his mercies. And the Bible says, God is rich in mercy. The Bible says he is always ready to lavish upon us his loving kindness and mercy. Our job is just to recognize our shortcomings. Our job is just to recognize that we are limited. Our job is to openly recognize that, Father, I made a mistake. I walked away from your past. Show me mercy. Father, have mercy. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to cry for mercy. Begin to pray. Cry for the mercies of God. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. Yes, somebody pray, somebody pray. Somebody pray. Open your mouth and cry, Father, have mercy. Open your mouth and say, Father, show me mercy. Open your mouth and pray, Father, show me your loving kindness. Father, show me your loving kindness. Begin to confess, begin to confess. Say, Father, show me your loving kindness. Show me your loving kindness. Where I have been sleeping out of the wicked. Father, show me your loving kindness. Where I have been sleeping on the seat of scoffers. Father, show me your loving kindness. Where I have been, oh God, show me your loving kindness. Show me your loving kindness. Somebody pray, somebody pray. Father, show me your loving kindness. 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 Father, 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 show me your loving kindness. Yes, somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, you're going to pray. Prayer point number three. You're going to pray. Father, set me on fire for your word. Increase in me the hunger for your word. Holy Spirit, God. And teach me to see the light when I meditate on the word in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin mm -hmm. to pray, Father, set me Father. on fire, O oh God. Father, set me on fire, fire for your word. word. Father, Father increase. Father, set me on fire for your word. Holy Spirit, begin to invite the Holy Spirit. Begin to invite the Holy Spirit. Begin to invite the Holy Spirit. You are not coming in your any time to study the word. You are not coming in your any time to study the word. You are not coming in your any time to study the word. Meditation <laughs> the 
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Prayer point number four. Very important. You're going to pray. Father, honor your word in my life and make me fruitful in my career and business throughout 2023. There will be no season of lack in the name of Jesus. You're going to pray. That's what the Bible, the Bible, that's what the Bible says. Uh, when you look at the key verse, the Bible says that when you do all of these things, when you take the responsibility by grace uh, and by the help of the Spirit, uh, you will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water. And when you are planted in God, uh, when you are planted in the kingdom of God, uh, you will yield fruit in its season. And that means throughout the season. That means you're going to pray that, Father, throughout the year of 2023, from January to December, I will be fruitful. My career fruitful. My business fruitful. There will be no season of lack in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mind and begin to pray. Father, Lord God of heaven, may your word in my life, may your word in my life, may your word in my career, may your word in my business, I will be like a child in my business, I will be like a child in my business, I will be like a child in my business, may I be like a child in my business, may I be like a child in my business, may I be like a child in my business, may I be like a child in my business, may I be like a child Thank you, Lord. 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 In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The last prayer point. You're gonna pray. You're gonna pray. You're gonna pray. Father, it, it, it is written in your word. In whatever I do, I will prosper. That is what the word says. And I, I want you to pray this prayer point with understanding. Just with the understanding that everything can pass away, but the word of God never passed away. Pray with the understanding that God will honor his word more than his name. Pray with the understanding that God is so faithful that whatever he says, he will do it. So you are going to pray, Father, it is written in your word that whatever I do, I will prosper. This word in my life, this word in my career and business, in the name of Jesus, Whatever I do throughout next year, let it prosper. Let me prosper in my career. Let me prosper in my business. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray with authority. Open your mouth and pray with authority. Father, by the authority of your word, in your word, Father, it is written in your word that you are in your God. Yes, I will be in your God. Somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. I 
I speak the spirit to you. I speak prosperity to I speak prosperity to you. I speak prosperity to you. I speak Thank you for the grace. The grace of multiplication. The grace of multiplication. The grace of multiplication. The grace of multiplication. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The grace of multiplication, I heard that. The grace of multiplication. God will be multiplying whatever you're doing. Whatever you're doing. As long as you are in his presence and you tarry in his presence. Whatever your hands find to do or whatever your hands have been doing, there will be multiplication. There will be multiplication in the name of Jesus. There's a word for somebody. Who here... You saved money, two million francs, two million francs, and you have been doubting this business. Should I start or should I not start? You're a lady. Who is that? Exactly two million francs in your bank account. Should I start? Should I not start? Will it succeed? Will it not succeed? Who is that? Funny thing is, people come and many people are not up, so they come and watch later and then they start complaining. But the word is, you have saved money, two million francs. They have been doubting. Should you start or should you not start? That is a business to start because God is gone ahead of you. The grace of God, the favor of God, is already speaking on that business. So whoever the word is for, go and start. The good news is you are waiting on the Lord. You are waiting on the Lord. Go and start. Go and start. And God's grace will multiply that and turn it into a powerful business in the name of Jesus. All right. Thank you, Father. Just open your mouth and thank God. Thank you for today. Thank you for the word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the revelation for answered prayers. Thank you for grace. Thank you for your word. Thank you for coming to pass in your life. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, Amen. Quick instruction. So I told I told us that um, we'll be having a second prayer session this year, as directed by the Holy Spirit, to consistent to continuously prepare for next year. So, and the next prayer session, the next session is focusing purely on prayers. Will be one one hour of prayers 
for four days. So it's gonna strictly on our careers and businesses for, please don't miss it. It will be prayers and, 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 and prophecy, prayers and the prophetic. So don't miss it out because God is set to do wonderful things for next year for those who are willing to prepare. The good news we have in the kingdom is we have the power to orchestrate. We have the power to dictate what the enemy can do and not do. So through those four days, you will be arresting the schemes of the enemy next year. Like God's particular ask that we are going to pray for one month after another. We're going to take January, pray for it, February, pray for it. So come prepare. Pray for one hour straight. I am not going to teach. I'm just going to lead in the prayer session and then begin to prophesy as the Lord directs. So don't miss it out. Uh, bring, invite people, career people, just focus on careers and businesses and of course your life. So it's going to run from Friday the 16th Saturday the 17th, Sunday the 18th, and then Monday the 19th. There's going to be midnight prayers. So it's going to be 12, p 12 a.m. your time, not going to be 3 a.m. So pray from 12, 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. That's, that's the instructions, midnight. So it's not going to be. I know you want to control stuff, you want to control your life. Midnight prayers is one of the, uh, of the realms that you need to understand and manifest. So those kind of prayers are better midnight prayers. Okay. So it's going to be powerful and you can also prepare your prayer points because on the last day we'll have the opportunity to pray for prayer points and connect to them and of course uh, um, do as the lord has directed so four days of prayerfully this part of this is part of the pre-preparation like teaching these things and getting us prepared for this and of course after the prayer sessions we'll continue doing teachings in preparation let me tell you when you prepare prayerfully and with the word you become indestructible. Even the enemy is scared. The enemy fears anybody who is loaded prayerfully and loaded with the word because he knows. Do you know why? When Jesus fasted and came back from the wilderness, he was praying and then he, he was the word. The enemy tried, took him to the mountain and the hear and said, turn this stone to bread. Jesus was not moved. Jesus was not destroyed. He could not do anything. There is nothing you can do to a prayerful man and a man who is deep in the word. That destiny is secured. You want to, so well, for the four days, we'll be securing 2023 through midnight prayers, your career, your business, and unleashing new chapters in whatever concerns you. And we will see the hand of God mightily. So come prepared and prepare yourself. If you can fast within the, I strongly recommend fasting is not a must, but I strongly recommend fasting. And what, what I would recommend is, uh, um, you can do half day fasting, okay? So when we pray from 12, uh, uh, 12 a.m. This is what I do personally for me many times, and because it it twins me to receive from God very well, right? So you can when we pray during the midnight, you sleep, wake up, you can do, but don't eat. You can eat from 12 p.m. Why? Because you can when you pray and go to sleep, God can speak to you through your dreams, or within the day in the early mornings, God can minister to your heart about your future. So be very sensitive. So fasting during that time and cutting yourself from certain unnecessary hangouts and and going to place unnecessarily, reduce your movement during these four days so that you are connected to, because God will be speaking to people. You're going to hear testimonies. God also is speaking to you, to yourself about your own year. You will receive instructions, directions, things to do and to stop doing. Okay? So prepare for this. It's going to, this is a special four days created, designed by God for PF to focus now prayerfully, four days of intense one hour prayer. Sometimes it may go more than one hour as the spirit leads, but we will do our best to make sure that we encounter God during these four days and by his grace and mercy, somebody will redesign their 2023 to be the best year ever for them in Jesus' name. So prepare for it. You can invite your friends if you can, your family members if you can, and uh, we will have an amazing time in the presence of God. Okay. God bless you. Have a great week ahead. And uh, may the hand of God go ahead of you 
in the name of Jesus. You are blessed and preserved and protected in your going out and in your coming in in the name of Jesus. Anybody who is applying for anything, anybody who is going to any office or for whatever reason, the favor of God will speak for you in the name of Jesus. You will find favor before kings and queens in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare the hand of God goes ahead of you and begin to make straight every crooked path in Jesus' name. God bless you and have a great week.